<laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the end of the year webinar. I started this without hitting the broadcast button, so I've already been through this slide. <laughs> Just kind of the way this this time of year goes, right? You all get it. Um, but welcome. Thank you for joining me today. We have a bunch of information on these slides that I want to go over with you. You can ask questions in your question box and Paula can relate those. So feel free to put any questions that you might have in there. Um, this is for your information. I wanna make sure that you guys, it's clear and understandable. And when I find my box to go forward, there it is. Oh, it went too far on me, Adrian. <laughs> there we go. So on today's agenda, um, June claims are open and ready for you after your last day of school. We're gonna talk about some pending legislation, some summer PEBT, summer itself, free and reduced applications, breakfast after the bell legislation, additional funding, and then main harvest week, farm to school month, and national school lunch week. Are you ready? So pending legislation. I've been asked by the staff to kind of go over where we are with legislation. Um, none of the legislation has been signed by the governor as of yet. So nothing is set in stone or written or anything. So we'll go through these just so you know where they are and how they might affect you. You can keep this in the back of your brain. So LD921 is about local funds expansion it passed out of the committee and got through the house and it is actually waiting for the governor's signature. And this bill requires the Department of Ed to define minimally processed for reimbursement. So this is gonna expand the way that you can use the local foods fund for reimbursement. Um, over the summer, we'll um, look at a definition of minimally processed and get that out to you in September. Again, we're just waiting on the governor's signature for LD 921. LD 947 is to support the distribution of summer meals and leftover food. So this bill passed out of committee without the emergency on it, and it has been amended to remove the leftover food portion of the bill. It was engrossed in the House on 6-1 in the Senate on 6-6 with the amendment. And the information that's still in this bill will allow us to be as flexible as possible with summer meals. And that's all about it says. LD 1002 is about a 30 minute lunch. This also passed out of committee and it's moved to the DOE study of the school day. There has been various bills that have been moved into the study of the school day, and you'll hear more about this next year. They are, the DOE is required to report back to the committee on this. Um, I believe it's in January. So they are looking to study what's going on in the school day across the state and report back to the committee. So there's a few bills in here. So that's been moved to that, so that nothing will happen with this until next year. The milk only bill, LD 1128, was also moved into the report of the school day, and they took off the emergency designation. And this was to allow any child to receive a free milk, no matter if they chose to take lunch or not. Um, so again, this was moved out um, into the report of the school day. So nothing will happen about this bill until next year also. The fourth one is LD 1183. This is the equipment fund. This was an amended for a one-time authorization um, of the fund to move the breakfast after the bell funding into the school meals and program improvement fund. 
and then to increase the fund up to $500,000. Again, this is a one time only. It would also include a reimbursement for food costs related to medically necessary special dietary purposes. This passed out of committee and has gone through the House, but we have not heard from the Senate about this bill. Um, so we'll see what happens um, as it moves through the Senate and if it makes it to the governor's desk. Okay, this slide is about summer PEBT and school year PEBT. And Adrian's here for that. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Adrian. Um, so pandemic EBT um, is still a program that USDA um, has made available for states to apply to. Uh, the program will be expiring at the end of September um, and Department of Health and Human Services has been working with Department of Education over the course of this year to work on a plan to try to get approved through USDA. Um, and it's um, been going back and forth with edits and various things. And it looks like we are getting closer to having a USDA approved plan for 2023 pandemic EBT. Um, and there are two different versions. One is a school year and childcare age um, plan called the school year 23 PEBT plan. Um, and I don't have too much information about that. Um, it will look, um, it will look like 2022, um, and there's a program in there for um, students who aren't enrolled um, in national school lunch program schools. Um, and then there's also a separate summer 2023 PEBT plan that's working through the final stages of approval. And this is just where I, I kind of want to plug some things to have in the back of your minds um, if this plan does get approved, because there will be a pretty quick turnaround. Um, so if we are approved for 2023 PEBT for the summertime, a standard $120 summer PEBT benefit will be issued to all eligible children. And eligible children are those who are enrolled in, in an NSLP participating school at the end of the 2023 school year and are enrolled in a special provision two or CEP school in school year 2023 or on the DC list, or if it's not a SPT or SP2 or CEP school um, and they're not on the DC list, eligible by um, National School Lunch Program application for free or reduced price meals in 2023. So this is the important part um, for those who are on who might not be doing SB2 or CEP. Um, households have until June 30th to submit a National School Lunch Program household application for free and reduced price meals. Um, if they're not already eligible for free reduced price meal benefits to see if they are eligible to get that 2023 summer PEBT benefit. So applications must be submitted by June 30th um, and the school year 23 National School Lunch Program household application for free and reduced price school meals must be used for 2023 summer PEBT eligibility. And that's if this is not a DC list household and if it's not at SP2 or CEP school. So um, we'll put information on the Thursday update once we hear if we get approved um, and we'll probably have separate information for the school year 23 PEBT plan because that's a bit more complicated than um, summer EBT. So keep your eyes peeled. Thanks Adrian. Yep. And when summer is over, school some summer begins, right? When school year is over, summer begins. Um, we would let you to like us. We would let you. We would like you to let us know if you're going to do a kickoff event or a spike event, or if you just want to show off your program to the USDA. We've got multiple requests from them to come up to Maine because who doesn't want to be in Maine in the summer? Um, and they'd really like to come visit. So. Um, if you are willing to have or would like to have the USDA come visit, um, please let us know. The Hot Lunch Summer Finder is up. It is live and everything will be up next week. Um, so hotlunchsummer.com, please use that. Um, 
site and advertise that site for your family so they know where they can get summer meals. And I think um, Thursday, I believe that information will be up this Thursday. Great. It's actually, it's live now. I it's, yeah, it's live now, but 23 is loaded, I think, this week. 23 sites. School year, summer 23. Oh, summer 23. Yeah. <laughs> so everything will be up on Thursday. So like we said, please use this. Please advertise this so that families know where they can come and get summer meals. Okay, on to 23-24. Just some things I want you guys to have your heads up about um, as we move forward um, into the fall. The 23-24 free and reduced applications are available on the website. Please be sure to choose the one that reflects your pricing structure. Special provisions, non-based year programs and CEP are not allowed to collect free and reduced applications. Um, and if your districts were using Nutrilink last year, you will be removed um, from that site. So just to make sure that you know that non-based year and CEP schools are not allowed to collect free and reduced applications. And if you were to be collecting those, it would be an unallowable cost for the just for your program, um, and you should be paid for doing that from another source of funds. CEP application deadline has been moved to August fifteenth. You must still use your April first, twenty three data, um, but you can still decide if that's what you want to do. A letter from your superintendent must go to David Hartley um, if you want to participate. I do encourage anybody um, who could reach that 40% threshold either at a school or at their district to really consider doing CEP. Um, it really does streamline the process um, for your families and yourself. Federal income guidelines have been released and can be found on our website, um, but reimbursement rates have not been released as of today. And um, FFVP approved site list was posted on the Thursday update last week. Um, and a list of the SAUs with administrative reviews will actually be posted on this coming Thursday update. So you can see those. No amounts for the FFVP. Um, FFVP amounts weren't posted, just the schools that were approved. We're waiting to see what that looks like before we give you the figures. Um, schools, so um, for breakfast after the bell legislation, um, we'll be using the data from this year. Um, for a base year comparison and breakfast after the bell programs that don't see a 10% increase in free and reduced participation after next year will be required to write a corrective action plan to describe the efforts um, to increase participation for 24 and the gold standard for participation is 70%. So just to let you know that this year will be the base year um, and those percentages will be based on the base year percentage count. You won't have to do anything till the following year, but just wanted to make sure you know. CACFP is doing an at-risk training, which is mandatory. Um, it will, they're offering a in-person training here at the Child Nutrition Office in Augusta on August 14th. And they are doing a virtual training on the 24th from one to two. It's a great time to start thinking about the program, enrichment and partners for next year. The time will be announced on the in-person training once we get confirmation from ICN, um, if they're able to, to offer that training that day. So we're really excited to announce that we expect to have some additional funds available for you for next year um, especially when we know that you're going to be we anticipate that there'll be a lower reimbursement 
rate for meals next year. So we have our local foods fund, LFF. We're anticipating that we'll see some federal local foods for schools funds that we've applied for and are expecting that we should get. And then we have been notified that there is a fourth round of supply chain assistance funds. Um, so all these funds will be available for you for the upcoming school year. We are requesting that you do an opt-in, opt-out form, and it be submitted to the office by June 30th so that we can finalize the amounts of the awards for the upcoming school year. And those forms will be available in the Thursday update this week. So really important, want you guys to just get that form, check off the boxes and send it back in so that we can figure out those numbers for you. Um, it's really exciting. So I've made a little chart to try and show you all the different funds and what you will be able to purchase with them. Um, as requested, we did a little survey for the schools to whether or not you wanted to do LFF and LFS at the same time, and you said yes. So the majority wins. We're gonna offer those simultaneously. Um, LFF, which is our state local funds, is still $5,000 for each SAU and an extra $500 if you attend any of the DOE trainings. Those funds are available throughout the year. It is for minimally processed local produce and value added dairy and protein. And this is still the $1 for every $3 spent. We will be changing the reimbursement model and we'll have you email the receipts at uh, email to be disclosed later on before the summer. Um, and we'll validate and pay outside of the current system for anybody who uses those state funds. I would really love you to focus on the federal funds. Um, these local foods for school funds come from the federal government. Um, and there is a link for which you should have already seen um, that was already posted for the local foods for schools. There's over $600,000 um, and they need to be used before December of 24. So it's quite a bit of money. Um, and I really do encourage schools that aren't gonna participate, let us know so that we can give the money to the schools that will participate. Um, it again is for minimally processed local produced value added dairy or protein and we're really going to be focusing on the small and socially disadvantaged farmers you will get reimbursed a hundred percent for your purchases that you use for this local foods for school fund um, you are only able to use this for the national school lunch and school breakfast program so you will not be able to use them until school starts again unless you are operating a national school lunch program over the course of the summer. And we will be using the CMP web reimbursement model um, that we had used for LFF um, through CMP web. We're gonna take a look at all of those funds next June um, and reallocating those for the SAUs that are using those funds so that we can spend down all of those funds by next December. Everybody get all that? <laughs> I know it's really confusing, but Paul is gonna nicely put the chart onto the website um, and you'll be able to see it, that under the financial page under grants. Um, so if you have any questions about that, feel free to let us know. Um, we've also received some news that there'll be some supply chain, a fourth round of supply chain funds. So this is really exciting also. Um, there will be an opt-in opt-out form on Thursday. Please make sure you opt in or opt out. Again, this will be reimbursed at 100%. Um, and it is for minimally processed foods. So it's a great way 
if you guys can start thinking over the summer about how you might be able to use these funds. Um, this fourth round of funds is a lot of money. So I think we've we've uh, received about three million dollars in supply chain assistance for the just for the state. So you will see more than you did in the first round. Um, so it's a really great opportunity to think about how you can use that, how you can use all of these funds for minimally processed foods. I want somebody to tell me a really great, exciting way that they think that they can use these foods. So a great way to take advantage of all this money coming in is a main harvest week is September 18th and 20, through the 22nd. And October is farm to school month. Think about using these funds. Um, to take advantage and do something really fun and exciting during either of these events. Um, and don't forget to sign up for Harvest of the Month if you have not already done so. Um, and a farm to school map can be found on the website under Harvest of the Month if you're looking for farms to purchase from. So just a couple of reminders, the NSLP sodium target 1A transitional standard takes effect on July 1st. So we'll be looking at schools to drop their sodium. Um, and the, you can find a link um, on the website or you can just Google transitional standards for school lunch and you'll find this new sodium target um, that we should be looking for. But if you're using all those minimally processed foods, you should be good. Um, we wanted to announce that next year for trainings, we're gonna be changing our platform. Um, we are going to be leaving the webinar, web, go to webinar. the go-to webinar. And we are going to go to uh, Zoom meetings after July 1st. So. Just a little heads up, please be patient with us as we navigate this new platform, but it really will be exciting to be able to see your smiling faces on this computer as I'm doing this, instead of looking at a blank screen. A reminder that the National School Lunch Week is October 9th through 13th, and this year's theme is Level Up with School Lunch. Um, be sure to ch check out the National School Nutrition Association website for more information and some um, menus that you can use for this theme. That would be exciting as well. And just a few quick thoughts. End of year inventory is a great way to assess your program. Once you've got that inventory done and all your bills are in, it's a great time of the year to try and do that and take a look at where you stand, how you finished, what money you have left over. Um, it's a great way to do that. Your ED, ED-293T report will be available to auditors from you. So if an auditor is looking for that report, it can be found on the reports tab in CMP Web. So you will need to provide that to them if they're looking for that. Your annual packets um, will be due on August 15th as usual. Um, there is an additional page on there to update your signatures um, and the user access form for your application pages for both NSLP and FTP. So please make sure you update both of those pages for signatures if there's been any changes in your program. And for those participating in CACFP at risk, their applications are due on August 31st. Um, be sure to take advantage of the summer to train your staff and be sure to include the civil rights requirement for all um, that you need to do each and every year. I hope to see everybody at the MSNA conference on August 8th and 9th in Portland. And the next, the Welcome Back webinar will be on August 28th. So I just want to wish you guys all a great summer. Thank you for all you do for the children of Maine. You make such a difference in so many lives. Um, and I'm proud of what you guys do. If there's any questions, you can put them in the chat and we'll hang on for a few minutes. Um, other than that, we'll see you around in summer. 
um, and definitely at the MSNA show in August. Thank you all so much and have a great summer. We have one question. One question? Mm -hmm. Just to check, the 23-24 school year, we are not required a 30-minute lunch. No, you are not required by legislation for a 30-minute lunch for the 23-24 school year. Can we use the Good Crust Company for local foods? I believe that we are approved to do it for the local foods funds. And we will, I will double check and make sure that if we can use it for the local foods for schools. But I believe that we can do that. But I'll double check and we'll post something on the website. The question is, would you email this, the, us the slides from the webinar, please? Later this afternoon, the webinar will be posted on our website, on our webinars and trainings page, in both the PowerPoint and the recording and the PDF files. All right, we'll wrap it up for this year. Thank you all for all you do. Have a great summer. Enjoy the sunshine today because I think it's going away. <laughs> Take care.